Hello, George from uh, Burley Oaks Academy. You've been doing our Wellbeing Ambassadors primary pilot. So can you tell me a little bit about your school and the people mental health issues or needs that you've identified? Okay, so our school is um, quite a leafy lane primary school. So we're, we're in um, a, really, a really good area of the Wharf Valley. However, we still find there are a lot of different presenting um, mental health and well-being needs um, due to that. So we're a really forward-thinking primary school. We've had mental health and well-being on the radar for a few years now, and we've been running um, anxiety workshops and emotions workshops right from year one, um, just teaching the children, educating them about emotions, how they feel it in their bodies, how to recognise in them and trying to introduce strategies early so that they've really got that, that knowledge um, around their own uh, mental health and, and, uh, and what to do to help themselves feel better. So we're trying to be really proactive and give them the tools and strategies before they actually escalate into something more serious. You have taken part in our pilot for our Wellbeing Ambassadors Programme. So what does the Wellbeing Ambassadors Programme mean to you and how would you explain that to another school? Well, the Wellbeing Ambassadors Programme has been really good for us um, because it's, a, it's a, something else that we can give a name and bring a certain group of individuals together who are really taking ownership, being ambassador and feel proud to be part of the team and, um, and a real role model for their class. And um, it's worked really well. It's been nice because we've got a team of the ambassadors who, when we've got something special coming up on World Mental Health Week or Children's Mental Health Day and so forth, things that we do to really raise awareness. Um, we've got a team already there who are on it and we can get things organised and they, they really, really enjoy it. How are you using the programme then? What, you know, take me through from day one what, what you did when you got access to do the materials and how you train the pupils and things like that. Okay, so what I did was I, um, I initially arranged a date to get, um, I asked the teachers to everyone that put someone forward, ask the volunteers in the class, explain what it's about. And then out of the people that volunteered themselves, choose someone that they think would represent their class really well and who, who actually it might help their self-confidence and self-esteem to be part of something like this. So that's how we went about getting the children together. So I got a list together and then we arranged a date where we could use my room, which is quite a big um, well-being room. It's lovely environment to bring them all together and lay out the day um, for them it worked well they 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 took it all on board they were absolutely brilliant and what was your biggest worry or concern before taking part in the pilot and how do you feel now um I think my my biggest worry was the fact that um it was quite a quite a lot of children really in one room to train at a time across quite a wide age range um, I was, and because it was new to me as well, so I was a little bit, uh, you know, how's this going to go? Um, just time. It was just the time, really, because it's so busy in school at the moment with needs cropping up. And my job is to be there when the children need me and they have big emotions and things going on. And so I was like, thinking, oh, you know, this is going to be tricky. But um, actually, it, it was just one of those things where you just have to set the time aside get on with it and um, and it has been worth it because they they we've got this team here now and every half term I have a big meeting I, I go and, and get get them all together we look at what we've done over the last half term what we've put in place and we look at what we're planning over the next half term and who can get involved with what and if anyone's got any new ideas to add to the mix and um, we come together and, and it's just lovely. They, they really look forward to that. And it's a, ple it's a pleasure. It's nice. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant to hear. What are your plans for the programme going forward then? What would you like? To, how would you like it to evolve? Because you get three years access when you join. So what are your plans going forward? Actually, I, I would add a couple of extra older ambassadors in there as well, because I think that at the top of the school, when we have more um, 
more things crop up that they might want to talk to each other about then mm. um that might be useful so i probably would add a couple of extra ambassadors in for the new training and just give them all a refresher have that refresher we always do it in school when we're doing the learning so why not with with something like this just to refresh them and give them something something more accessible for the younger ones to look at and it just gives them a chance to then question anything that maybe they weren't so sure about the first time round. What would you say to someone who's thinking about using the Wellbeing Ambassadors programme for their primary school? I think it's great. I think um, definitely give it a try. Use the Wellbeing Ambassadors programme. Um, I'd say have a look through and get yourself really familiar with the um, with the, the PowerPoint presentation first and so get everything ready but actually you know don't worry about it either because the children just really enjoy it and they are great they know they are some of them know more than you think they know they help each other they ask questions um and it they are proud and happy to do it they they really embrace it so don't hesitate go go for it try the wellbeing ambassadors program and it'll really help in so many ways what's the impact it's made on the school then what uh, obviously it's still raw, you know getting going you've not been doing it for a very long time but what have you noticed already is successful i think it's really successful school does um events so we're doing lots of inter- intergenerational um stuff with the community at the moment so we've got um people coming in from um from the village the older people people maybe with disabilities we're, we've arranged christmas bonanzas we've been to the parish center to play games um and really it's just been lovely to just have that group of children to call on who are really emotionally intelligent and and know, and know all this stuff and and just got those tools and and that communication there they feel confident and so I think for the school, it's been great because if we've been doing an assembly or we've been doing a special event like that, we've already got this really mindful group of children that we can bring together who are, who are used to going, you know, going out there and, and they've got that confidence and that, the gaining experience all the time. And um, thanks for sharing. Have you got a final quote? Just keep going, keep on empowering children with the knowledge of, of their own mental health and, and being there for other people. What difference do you think that makes when children are empowered in that way? I think it just gives them the self-belief that they need uh, and confidence to be able to have that resilience to fight off adversity when it comes their way. 